Uh, if you want to put the microphones on me, I think can, I can discuss that a little bit. Uh, I was surprised to see that uh, Mr. Zink did want to take responsibility. I mean, it's uh, not the first stage in the proceedings, but I think there was definitely tribal issues here. I want it to be entirely clear that for him to run this trial to the stage uh, that we made it to, it was justified. I've reviewed all of the evidence. We've had thorough opportunity to uh, review and discuss it. And I think even today there were tribal issues. Despite that, Mr. Zink decided, he said, look, I want to take responsibility for this. And that's why we came in here today and he changed his plea. And that was after long discussions with the Crown in terms of what facts were going to be read in. And I think that <coughs> it's important to also note that not all of the facts that the Crown initially was relying on uh, actually made it into the, uh, to the discussions that uh, ultimately ended up in the uh, change of plea. But at the end of the day, you are pleading guilty to filing false expense claims uh, that you said you gave money to charitable organizations and you didn't give them the money. And you pleaded guilty to fraud and breach of trust. So what's I, your explanation? i got to be careful there. I don't want him to provide an explanation at this point, okay? Because he's going to be going to see a probation officer. He's going to be doing a pre-sentence report. This is not the juncture for him to get into an explanation. Let's try it this way. What would you like to say to your constituents? I, I, I think like uh, the judge said today that, uh, you know, obviously there's a second stage of this, so we're going to adhere to that. Um, to my constituents, um, obviously there's uh, a level of disappointment. Um, you know, getting into politics, uh, the first day that you're elected, you're told to get reelected. How you do that is obviously by trying to do as much as you can. Um, unfortunately, um, due to, to a number of issues, overextending myself, I found myself uh, falling into uh, a situation that was uh, led me obviously to this point. Um, for that, I'm very remorseful. Um, I do want to. Uh, Thank all my constituents for, for the week of support that they've given me last week. Um, I want to obviously thank my uh, my excellent counsel and his, his team um, to give me to this point to have the Crown approach us. It was not an easy decision for me to, uh, to back away um, from from this and come to this point, but obviously uh, a long look at the facts that came out last week. Um, many meetings over the weekend um, to get to this point. Uh, I'm relieved to, to see it move on. So are you saying that basically your financial situation is that you got in over your head and you're basically robbing Peter to pay Paul? Or what no, no, we're not going to get into that. I'm not going to allow him to answer questions that are rightfully left for the probation officer. What I will say, though, is, look, for him to even take responsibility the way that he did, it took some courage. This is a tough thing to deal with, especially when you have a lawyer that's telling you that there's tribal issues. Despite that, he, was, he decided to take responsibility. So I think that the focus of the interview is surrounding that. That's fine. But certainly, I don't want him to get into a discussion about topics that he should keep for the probation. Are you, are you going to resign your seat? There's a lot of things I have to think of, obviously. Um, and a lot of people I have to sit down and talk to. Um, that'll be part of part of my thought process, obviously. Um, but we're going to take some time to, to review. Obviously, now my, uh, my point is to get back and talk to as many people as I can and, uh, and survey it that way. There's obviously discussions I have to have with, uh, you know, the speaker um, and the legal counsel at the legislative assembly, as well, uh, to give me some further insight into that. Uh, but right now, we're just going to prepare uh, the next step. Obviously, I have some commitments and obligations, and I'm going to adhere to that. Would you like to stay on as MLA? Absolutely. Uh, you know, there's there's no question uh, that I've, I've made some mistakes. Uh, I don't think that that. Uh, takes away from all the good that I've been able to do. There was a number of organizations and individuals that uh, benefited um, from the funds that I've been allocated to them over the years. Um, a number of them that continue to spread from around the province. Um, I've made a huge impact in people's lives, and obviously I'd like to continue doing it. It's a job I'm very passionate about. Um, but there were some mistakes made, and I'm, I'm standing up but, but by this plea, sir, you, does it not mean that you, you you have to leave the job under existing law? Absolutely. Uh, there were some discussions this morning with the Legislative Council. Uh, those those discussions will continue. I think there has been precedent set in the past that don't dictate that I immediately have to step down. Uh, but again, that will be a part of the discussions I'll have over the next uh, coming days. Well, you may not have to step down. The Legislature can be recalled and you can be expelled. Are you expecting that would happen if you don't resign? You know what? There's one person that has control of that, and it's not me. That's unfortunate. But if that's to happen, that's something that I have to live with. When you say that one person, you're talking about the premier or the speaker? Well, it could. There's going to be discussions, obviously, and, and I would have suggested the premier was probably going to be party to those discussions. And if that happens, you know, so be it. I. That's what I have to go through. I have to do. It. And but you've lost your pension now. You, you agree to that? And you know what? I have legislation passed last month. Yeah, and pension. and to be quite honest. Um, you know, I said when, when the, the, the bill was passed as law in the House, um, the, 
getting into politics was never about a pension for me. It was about allowing me to have the opportunity to help people that, that came to me. Um, I've become a navigator and negotiator and have influenced and, and, and impacted a lot of people's lives. It's never been about a pension. And you know what? That's a very new point for me. It's, it doesn't bother me at, at, at all. I can look at you in the next election. Like people will be looked at that your status as a potential candidate in the next election. Like I said, there's there's a lot of things that uh, I have to take into consideration. Um, I continue um, through all of this to have a tremendous amount of support and people um, that have obviously gone through last week uh, have come to me and said, you know what, people make mistakes. Um, other people have made mistakes. Other politicians have made mistakes. They were afforded the opportunity. Um, to, to pay back and make amends and continue on. Unfortunately, I, I was thrown into a frenzy audit. Um, they found mistakes. I'm obviously holding up my responsibility to that. Um, but yes, I would like to continue on. Um, the work that I do has some great value to the community that I serve. So as long as I continue to have that support, um, and the discussions obviously have to take place to, to allow it. What, what ran through your mind today in court as you had to answer each question yes to that judge? What was going through your mind? You, you know, it's, it's not just today. It's, you know, the, the feelings that you go through. I, I often talk to my constituents when they come to me with an issue. And, and I, you know, I'm usually pointing, pointing them in the direction of, of you know, legal counsel. Um, one of the things I will say to them is that uh, uh, you, you don't want to find yourself in front of a judge if you don't have to. You know, the good thing about politics is I have 20,000 constituents that decide my fate every time I put my name on a ballot. Here I'm putting my fate in, in the hands of one person and hoping that I can convince them of that. So each day, um, you know, you're left with thoughts of where is this going to go? You're watching the Crown present their case. You're seeing the excellent legal representation you're getting. And I'm, I'm, again, I'm very, very happy with, with Lyle Howe's representation. He, he fought every day for me. And I think the Crown understood that. And that's why they came back at us. To have a deal put on the table now, at this point, not not a regular thing that would normally happen, um, and to get the deal that I that I was provided, uh, I'm very happy. I'm happy, and I, I believe it's because of Lyle's representation. But the Crown says that they will be seeking a jail term, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think what you did deserves a jail term? You know, I'm going to leave that up for the judge. I mean, obviously, the Crown has a job. Um, they put forward a case that they think is, is worthy um, of, of a, a proper sentence that they think is proper. And, and again, you know, through a pre-sentence report, uh, the judge is going to weigh in all the factors. Again, we'll have another opportunity to uh, present. I, again, I think if I could sum it all up, you know, I'm in court last week. When I leave court, I have booked appointments. I'm in the office helping people till 9, 10 o'clock. I have a great passion for the work that I do and the, the impact that I make in people's lives. Even on his election break, he's dealing with his own trial. He's taking calls from the but, but, but right now, sir, I guess you have to respect you're a convicted criminal. Absolutely. Absolutely. I now have a criminal record. Um, it's not something that I'm very proud of. Um, you know, it's, it's a tough one. It, it, there's no doubt. It's, it's, it's tough. Um, but again, you know, the, the community and the people I served, you know, they, the expressions that were given to me was the fact that they acknowledge that no one's perfect. People make mistakes. And I can tell you that um, as an MLA for my first seven years, I was able to help a tremendous amount of people. And that's both personally and financially. Um, I've done a lot of good, and, and this by in no means takes that away from me. I can hold my head high and be proud of that fact. But yes, I do have a criminal record. So it sounds like if there's any way possible, you want to stay in the mind. There's some definite value in the work I do. Absolutely some definite value in the work that I do for the people that I serve. So you, and will, they ultimately, you will try to keep your seat? Well, you know, I, I'd like to think that, uh, again, when you run an election, it's probably the biggest popularity contest that you get. So you put your name on a ballot, and, and the people will decide. And, uh, it's probably been the best job I've ever had for that fact. There's not one person deciding your fate. It's a group of people that decide. And I can I can live by that. I can live by that. So like I said, there's going to be many conversations, many thought processes that are going to go in place. Um, a lot of work still to be done in the community. Um, I know the fact that I'm walking out of here today and being able to go right to my office and start working again, as I have been in calls this morning during the break, um, people are going to be happy with that. Um, if I was to walk away right now, and uh, It'd be sad to see the turmoil um, that would, would fall. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. It depends on the sentence, but I mean, they, they could ask.
for the money under the new legislation? Not every oh, second. listen, it, it's always been my, my intention. You know, I originally there was an audit. Um, I, I got clear of the first audit. Somehow, for whatever reasons, I find myself into a forensic audit that looks at me closer, and they found some mistakes and inefficiencies. Today, I'm taking ownership of that, and from day one, I, I said to my local council, Lyle Howe, if I owe somebody money, I deserve to pay that money back. Uh, you, I, I don't you, have do you have the financial resources to pay it back? I, oh, with well, well, Mr. Debray, uh, you, uh, you know, alluded to a fact that I now have a pension. Or no longer have a pension. Well, I do have the contributions that uh, I'm, uh, I'm allotted, and that's between fifty-five to sixty-five thousand uh, dollars that I can take as one lump sum. And if that's the choice that I make, um, that the monies that I owe will be paid back immediately. I, I won't wait for an order from the government, service Nova Scotia collections, whatever. I intend to pay back immediately as soon as I have that money, and I'll make that known to the crown and to the courts and to the public. You have said in the past, gambling is something you've done going forward? I, again, I, I think that's a question that's going to obviously be part of the pre-sentence. Um, we're going to just leave that for now. Uh, can you give any sense, we'll probably ask the Crown, this, how much money is was was not given to... Uh, no. I, I, I think over the course of the trial, there's been a num number of, uh, of issues that came up and numbers that were provided. Um, we'll wait for the final tally. So we'll, we'll hear in sentencing what happened that money? Oh yeah, there's yeah. There's, there's no question. The there's, there's there's no question. Okay, Mr. Howe, can you tell us what was an appropriate sentence? Yeah. Oh, listen, I've uh, I've been researching this extensively, and I still don't have an answer for you. We need to uh, go back to the drawing board, and I need to sit down and think about uh, what we want to put forward as an appropriate pitch to this judge. I don't have an answer at this point. I can tell you, uh, I don't agree with the crown. The jail is appropriate in these circumstances, but in terms of what we're going to be requesting, uh, I'm not 100 percent sure yet. And when I say jail isn't appropriate, that doesn't mean a custodial sentence in the community wouldn't necessarily be appropriate. But certainly uh, to see Mr. Zink go to an incarceration facility, I don't think that would be an appropriate sentence in these circumstances. That's up to the judge, though, at the end of the day, so we're not going to fight this in the hands of the media. We're going to wait until we come back on our sentencing day, and uh, we've got a very capable judge that's going to make that decision after we make submissions. But that's the reason we don't have a joint recommendation. The key reason. I'm not going to jointly recommend that this man goes to jail. I don't think that that's appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Oh, yeah. No